everybody, I'm Jim Bowley for JimBowley.com and welcome to this lesson on power moves with power chords. Now if you play any sort of rock style, you know that power chords are generally considered beginner material. As a matter of fact, it's usually one of the first things we learn. But the challenge level goes way up when we're required to shift these power chords back and forth quickly from fret to fret. It's really easy to get jammed up and to lose your accuracy and your stability. Now classic rock songs like Iron Man by Black Sabbath or You Really Got Me by Van Halen all the way up to more current materials such as Vertigo by U2 or Seven Nation Army by The White Stripes. Well, these are just a handful of the many songs that require some sort of fast lateral power chord shift. So it pays to learn this technique well. So let's check out a few easy tips that will make your power chord shifts stronger, more accurate, and more stable. There are two fundamental concepts that have to be in place before anything else. The first one is to eyeball your target fret. Now, this seems like a no-brainer, I understand, but beginners often forget to do this. We have to make sure we know where we're going before we actually move. So you want to make sure to shift your focus ahead of the chord. Don't look at your current chord, you're already there. Instead, look where you're going. Now, of course, this concept is especially critical if you're moving longer distances on the fretboard. When you're covering a span of just a few frets, though, your eyes will likely take in the whole span at once, and then you'll kind of bounce your focus back and forth. The second fundamental concept is to maintain your power chord position. Now, this again should seem pretty obvious, but it does bear saying since nothing else really matters if this is not locked in. So from fret to fret, you have to strive to maintain your good power chord position. That is, your bar fingers should be nicely rounded, you should be laying down on the treble strings to mute them, your other finger or fingers should be uh, rounded and up on the fingertips, and you have to maintain your good spacing. Now one thing to consider and definitely to practice is that when you're on the lower frets, they're much wider, and on the upper frets, they're a lot more compact. So you do have to adjust accordingly as you shift. Now with these two concepts firmly in place, we can move on to three power moves that are guaranteed to take things up a notch. We have two points of friction when shifting power chords, our fingers on the strings, and our thumb behind the neck. Now we usually learn pretty quickly that in order to shift along the neck, we have to release the pressure and with minimal friction shift to our new fret. Now this works perfectly in all cases except when we have to shift back and forth quickly in a short span of frets. Now, If we try to use that same technique for these moves, we're sure to get jammed up. So to shift quickly back and forth, we should fully eliminate one point of friction by pivoting on the thumb instead of releasing it and moving it. Now this creates a sort of windshield wiper technique where the fingers are allowed to swing side to side while the thumb pivots in place. It's highly effective and highly recommended. As the fingers move to the right, you'll notice the thumb points a little to the left. And as the fingers move back to the left, the thumb points a bit to the right. If you get nothing else out of this lesson, make sure you get this. The pivoting thumb allows the back and forth moves to take place quickly and accurately. If you haven't noticed by now, the bigger three finger power chord is not usually your best choice for fast lateral moves. Breaking it down to two fingers makes the movements much easier. But I utilize a technique that makes it easier still. Where most people will automatically use fingers one and three for their power chords, my default position is fingers one and four. Now I call this the pinky power chord and you'll notice that quite a few pros use this position as well. The pinky power chord relaxes your hand by making it more compact than it really even needs to be. Less tension in the tendons of the hand translates to easier movement back and forth. Now even if you think that the basic one and three position is easy enough, it's still got some inherent tension because of the finger spread. The pinky position virtually eliminates that tension and as a bonus, it even allows you to open up your hand when needed for wider chord voicings like this.
This has pretty much changed my entire power cord approach, and it's much easier to incorporate than most people think. And if you pair up the pinky position with the pivoting thumb, well now you've completely maximized your power cord moves. Again, highly, highly recommended. Like a gymnast coming off the parallel bars, you have to stick the landing when you move to a new fret. This can be easier said than done when you're moving quickly. So I recommend that you make a few shifts at moderate speed and focus on really settling into the new fret. Now wiggle the cord a bit until you feel perfectly stable. And then memorize that feeling. Guitar playing is all about muscle memory and your sense of touch and that includes your finger positioning and pressure. So wiggle that cord back and forth until you achieve that feeling of maximum stability. That's what you're aiming for every single time. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you got some insight into making your power cord move stronger, more stable, and more accurate. Now make sure to follow the link below so that you can see the full lesson on the website. And while you're there, take a look around. There are dozens of free lessons that I think you'll really enjoy. And from the website, you can subscribe to my mailing list if you wish. You can like me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. Thanks a lot for hanging around, and I'll see you next time.